There it is. Daddy, chill. Tank exposed him. Like, you said it with a serious face. Like, of course, boxing, people that's not boxing fans was going to believe. And some people in the, bo I mean, the boxing world believe. Dang, Eddie. In high school, you was the man, Eddie. What the f happened to you? Connor Ben Egg Boy. I'm dangerous. Absolutely. We got a list, too. Take why you have to do them like that, baby. Javante Davis is an absolute killer. He just exposed Eddie Hearn and Connor Ben for a fake offer. Let me show you. Javante Davis just posted this picture. He kept it real simple. It says $25 million where? Like where the $25 million? This has exposed Eddie Hearn. What Javante Davis did is he's holding his phone and he posted an actual screenshot of the offer or the DM from Eddie Hearn. Let's read it. Says, and I quote, Javante asked me to contact you regarding our offer to fight contact Connor Ben. We would like to talk further regarding this fight and our plan would be to stage this fight in May in the USA. We would offer 10,000, or actually it says 10 million, excuse me, $10 million plus an upside on the gate and pay-per-view that I would like to discuss further with you. Do you have a good time to discuss this week? Kind regards, Eddie, being Eddie Hearn, sent from the iPhone, right? $10 million. Now, this is a terrible look. Eddie Hearn went to media suggesting that Tank could have made $25 million by fighting his fighter, Connor Ben. And it was stated that he could have made the $25 million, but he chose to turn it down. But like Javante Davis is asking, $25 million where? Like the offer says $10 million, right? So here's some of the articles that you'll be able to find a simple Google search. It has now been revealed that Tank turned down an offer presented to him by Ben's promoter, Eddie Hearn, who is Matchroom Boxing Chairman. After once appearing confident that Ben versus Davis could be made, Hearn, recently interviewed by Fight Hype, discussed the failed fight. And it says, Gervonta Davis could have made $25 million. So this now looks terrible because we seen from Gervonta Davis. Okay, so here's the actual quote. We'll start there. I've already said it was eight figures, but with pay-per-view bonuses, and the gate upside, Davis could have made $25 million. If the fight is big, which I believe it is, but he didn't really want to entertain the conversations, right? Tank boxed at 141 pounds, by the way. Tank is a big favorite against Connor Ben, so I quite like Connor having an extra white, what might be four or five pounds because it's a very dangerous fight, but Tank called out Connor on socials and we went back and made him a big offer, but he didn't want to entertain the fight, right? And this is the video, yada, yada, yada. Horrible. Now this looks terrible because now we find out that that was cap. Now, I know some people are saying, oh, but Ego, it says pay-per-view upside. Connor Ben responded to this and he says, clearly, Jervumpa Lupa, that, that's really bad for trash talk, but whatever. It says, clearly Jervump, Jervumpa Lupa doesn't know what upside means, and he's sticking his tongue out emoji. Stick to fighting women, all talk, no smoke, Jervante, right? Boxing reporter Dan Rayfield says, there wouldn't be remotely close to $15 million dollars upside on the fight okay 
This is so funny that I even have to explain this. I agree with Dan Rayfield, the boxing reporter. There wouldn't be remotely close to $15 million upside on that fight. So, for example, Tank Davis showed you the conversation and he's saying $25 million where? The actual proposal sent from an iPhone says $10 million plus upside. So why would you tell the media that he could have made upwards of $25 million and everybody goes around and prints that and says, oh, Tank Davis, he didn't want to fight. <laughs> no, <laughs> he wasn't ready to fight Conor Ben for $25 million. And that's the number that is stamped everywhere. But $25 million, where? Where did you get that number if the base fee that you were willing to offer is $10 million? Because that means to get to the number you said, he would have to make $15 million via the back end on pay-per-view. Now, let's talk about that. Let's analyze that like Billy Crystal. Connor Ben failed a drug test. Facts. He claims it was eggs. He had too much eggs Benedict or whatever, right? These are the facts. Connor Ben has failed a drug test in recent memory. He is not a known commodity in my country. I'm in the United States. He's not a known thing. So you got two strikes right there. One, he failed a drug test. Let's be clear. So anytime you fail a drug test, that taints your brand. Furthermore, why do you think Eddie Hearn keeps talking about and staging Conor Ben's fights in America? This is a guy who never fought in America previously, and then he failed with a banned substance, two different tests, banned substance, blames it on the egg, and now he's beefing with the UK, the British Board of Boxing, the BBBOC, Right. And he has to go through hearings to try to clear his name or get a license back in the UK. That's why he just fought Pistol Pete in Las Vegas at 2 p.m. my time. And they were catering to the UK audience. He's not a known name. Like just the fact that he fought Pete Dobson in Las Vegas on a Saturday and I was running errands. I went to Kohl's and some other stuff. Right. He was fighting at 2 p.m. Literally, literally, he was fighting at 2 p.m. In the daytime. So that right there should show you in America, he's no star in his own homeland. He can't fight because he failed a drug test and he's dealing with all the ramifications. And he had to, I believe he relinquished his UK license and he's dealing with that. So first of all, that's the first strike. Second strike is he's not a known commodity. I mean, his dad is boxing royalty in terms of boxing fans. But even his dad, if you look at Nigel Ben, if you ask the average American who Nigel Ben is, they probably wouldn't know. Boxing, like diehard, like yes, if it's a diehard boxing fan and they watch boxing, especially in the you know the 80s or whatever, then they'll probably know who he is. But I'm just saying if you walk through and ask random fans, they wouldn't know even his dad, who was far more accomplished than his son. So what does that say about the son, right? The names that are name like I guess name known, name recognized people in America when it comes to boxing, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, guys like Muhammad Ali, the greatest, right? Guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson. These are the names that people would know even at a surface level. Connor Ben is not one of them. So you have a man who failed a drug test. In addition to failing a drug test, he's not a known commodity. He's not a pay-per-view attraction in America. He's fighting at 2 p.m. So where they do that out, how, how does Eddie Hearn feel that he would offer tank anything i like okay i get it tank engaged in like trash talk online 
but Tank is a superstar in boxing, the face of boxing, and he's doing record-breaking numbers. His very last fight is the Ryan Garcia fight. A lot of people keep trying to graze over this fact. His last fight is his biggest selling fight, and he hasn't fought since. So in boxing, you're only as good as your last fight. Well, his last fight happened to be the last fight in quite some time that did over a million pay-per-view buys since Floyd Mayweather, since Canelo Alvarez hit the million mark, right? Javante and Ryan Garcia did that. Now, I know the haters are going to be, oh, Ryan Garcia did it. It was Tank's show. It was a Showtime. It was led by Showtime. They were the lead promoters. He won the fight on top of everything else. So he advances. He gets all the credit, right? That's how it goes. He was the A-side entering it. He remained the A-side with the victory. So again, the whole concept of Javante Davis fighting against Conor Ben sounded stupid. But you had a lot of YouTube channels, a lot of content creators, a lot of people on X, and a lot of people in Facebook groups, a lot of people on Instagram. They use these opportunities because it becomes fashionable to diss Javante Davis and make negative videos or posts about Javante Davis. And they use this as a springboard to try to attack the face of boxing, Javante Davis and his brand and make it look like he was ducking a welterweight. Like, first of all, they're not even in the same weight class. Now, Javante Davis, per usual, has made the usual suspects in old media look very foolish because Eddie Hearn's running around and people are running around making content saying that Javante Davis was offered $25 million. And then he just showed you, he said $25 million where you offered me $10 million. This man just made the Forbes list and he fought Ryan Garcia made over $40 million in his last fight. He can make an in-house fight. It's rumored to be Frank Martin, but we'll see what Javante says. Cause it depends on him. And these numbers aren't accurate. Even Dan Rayfield is saying that wouldn't be remotely close to a $15 million upside. And let's talk about it. How on earth would the upside? So if you to get to $25 million, if the base guaranteed amount is $10 million, that means tank alone needs another $15 million to get to said quoted $25 million purse. How do you do that with a Connor Ben that I've explained throughout this video is not a pay-per-view attraction. He's failed a drug test. It's not an intriguing fight. He didn't even look great versus Pistol Pete Dobson. Like I'm talking about, he didn't look special, like outer worldly, right? How do you make that fight? And he fought at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. How do you then make that much money on a fight like that? Not like Javante Davis and Shakur Stevenson or Devin Haney or Frank Martin or whatever other fights people actually want to see. How do you do it with that particular fight? A man with no, absolutely no presence in America who's failed a drug test. That's a lot of extra money on the back end because you have to understand if Rematch Room were hosting this fight, then they would have to get some kind of cut. So you would have to have $15 million, like the, the live gate and the merch and the back-end pay-per-view sales would have to do so well, like they'd have to do a certain threshold for him to make that potential paycheck. So that wasn't even how it was framed. It wasn't framed like, oh, fight Conor Ben for $10 million. They used the most extreme number, which let's say is the max, but a fight like that isn't likely to generate the type of interest needed to the point where he would ever get to a $25 million max payout from the actual fight. It's not like Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. This is not one of those fights in Saudi Arabia where you got oil tycoons and they're just willing to pay top dollar for what they believe is an attraction like Joshua Ngannou. This is not that. So how was Tank ever going to make $25 million? But per usual, 
a lot of y'all and the fans and the Javante Davis haters, the usual suspects, you fell for the mousetrap. You fell for the mousetrap in an effort to make Javante Davis appear like he was ducking, appear like he was doesn't want to fight and, you know, and basically make him look bad. You tried it and then now he just exposed the whole game. So I'm loving it. And this is what usually happens. And I want to know from you boxing fans, all the people who we're only a couple months in, we haven't even reached my birthday month, which is March, the third month. We're two months in and the usual suspects, there's a lot of people that their opinions are everywhere when it comes to boxing and they've been wrong on many fronts, on many accounts. On my video, I barely even made any, on me on my channel, I barely even made any content regarding Javante Davis and Connor Ben. And I think, I, I believe I did one video and I told you in that one video, I don't plan on making a whole bunch because the fight is not happening. Book it. You guys could go watch the video. But again, we've been in the drought. So you have people who are trying to stretch the truth or, you know, throw a mudslide on Tank's name. And, you know, you have all these negative like websites and they're putting all oh, Tank Duck 25 million and this and that. And it just looks stupid. And they're doing Eddie Hearn's bidding all for a fight that was never going to happen. Furthermore, Tank Davis being the man who just did a million, why would Eddie Hearn, who would be the B-side, who doesn't have a great working relationship with PBC, why on earth would he be sending offers to Javante Davis? So I never even looked at this as something that was logical to happen next. And why would I? Why would the A-side receive an offer from an unpopular non-popular fighter from the uk who failed a drug test and he's clearly the b-side you know gervonta davis probably did that you know engage with them just to troll and just to waste your time but in my in my book like i said in my video and yet again the best in the business and it's not even close i was proven to be right this fight is not happening that's why i didn't want to spend a lot of my time and a lot of my resources even talking about it and as far as all the people and the fans and stuff who ran with Gervonta duck 25 million and all this type of stuff you look stupid he just showed you the actual chat in the proposal and it said 10 million dollars plus you got reporters like myself and dan redfield who have been in the game and they're smart enough to know that that you're not making 15 million dollar back in only on Gervonta versus Connor Ben. I mean, let's get real. No one even knows him in America. Like literally, this is not like a Ryan Garcia or a Connor Ben or Gervonta Davis versus Manny Pacquiao. I mean, if I'm if I'm lying, y'all let me know. If you live in America, tell me how many Connor Ben fights you watch. Tell me you watched his last five fights. You know what I mean? Literally, he fought at 2 p.m. I can't be any more transparent and clear. And he failed a drug test. That fight would not sell. This is not on people's radar. And it was foolish for Eddie Hearn to even waste time. But here's the thing. Eddie Hearn just wants to be a part of it. He just wants to be, he wants a piece of the action. So he's trying to like almost like weasel himself into a situation with a guy like Gervonta Davis. Like, oh, they're bickering online. Let me try to capitalize and be a part of it. It's like no different than, let's say a rapper's making a lot of noise in the streets, selling out their trunk or on the independent scene. Now the record labels, they want to be a part of that. They're like, man, Ludacris, he's selling out his trunk and he's he's on the radio and he's independent. We got to sign this guy. He, making a, he got a big buzz and a big loyal following. You know, that's how it is. Or Ice Spice or whoever's popping. You know, people look at it and they see you making waves on your own and then they want to be a part of it. That's all that this is. Eddie Hearn wants to be in the tank business. But unfortunately for him, he doesn't have tank signed to his promotional label. So the next way to get involved is to send an offer. Hey, we want to do a fight for you in May. 
And and even that in and of itself sounds stupid. Canelo's fighting Cinco de Mayo, so they're not going to put Gervonta and Conor Ben versus a Canelo fight. So May what? You know what I mean? You're, you you want to do Conor Ben and Tank in May in Vegas. Tank doesn't need you. Tank is Tank. Tank just did a million. Tank just made 40 million plus, 50 million plus with Ryan Garcia. Why does Eddie Hearn think that Tank would be in the market to fight his fighter who he has nothing to do with your company? I mean, all this stuff is laughable. But again, when it comes to Tank, it's popular to slander him at this moment because he got that kind of like that glow, that Floyd Mayweather effect. And that's what we're seeing. So I'm glad Tank put out the, the real and put out the proposal. Like he said, $25 million where check out these other videos on youtube we unpack we unpack we unpack coming to your live boxing ego unpack yeah we unpack we unpack we unpack coming